Hi, welcome to Zurich channel. Yesterday I was having a couple of uh, sessions uh, with my uh, students uh, and uh, in which uh, uh, you know I was having discussion about uh, some system aspects and uh, besides uh, uh, we are also discussing about uh, some uh, drivers and uh, stuff and uh, also the uh, aspect of uh, process uh, you know virtual uh, memory address space and uh, stuff and then I told that uh, this upcoming week and uh, session possibly I can discuss with a map because uh, this is something he is completely not aware of and also I seen often uh, uh, let it be college uh, syllabus or <coughs> in uh, you know uh, any sort of awareness or any any system concepts they don't much uh, discuss about <laughs> mmap see mmap is quite uh, an interesting aspect uh, uh, it can be sort of tampered and can be used like a uh, one among the uh, you know shared memory options as well because as the name says mmap you can share uh, i mean you can create a memory uh, share uh, okay and you can create a memory map and then you can access that memory map rather than using the traditional uh, you know user space uh, uh, you know memory allocation let it be a static array or uh, you know a dynamic uh, memory via malloc or something so when you use uh, you know static uh, arrays uh, it will be uh, in a global variable or something it happens in the you know um, heap versus uh, if you do in an api it happens in a stack all all this finds uh, you know things are fine but what happens is generally when you do anything it is going to use the same uh, process memory address space see this is a virtualized uh, address space which is a fake illusion which operating system or the kernel uh, you know provides so unfortunately in the college test books what happens is they just uh, teach some vague concepts about uh, you know memory management and immediately they dive into this uh, you know ever so boring topic of uh, paging and page faults and all this uh, stuff see their focus is to teach you some of this and then immediately they focus about uh, framing uh, the syllabus and questions for the exams and the stuff so uh, the main intent is uh, as an architect if i say the main intent is by doing so you are isolating the address space so if you do any goof up in the uh, in this address space <laughs> okay you are going to get segmentation fault but you are not going to get any you know system crash system wide crashes or something like that say say in another case if you do any goof up in kernel code linux kernel code then it is going to do a kernel oops and it is going to crash the entire system see that's the difference between you know kernel memory access versus this you know virtualized you know imaginary virtual memory address space see i can illustrate in a way where uh, you know you can uh, imagine uh, say you have uh, this entire ram uh, like uh, you know uh, in some videos or uh, if you are a student generally i uh, mention uh, the memory as ram because i i tell the word ram it says that it is a hardware aspect of the memory uh, when you say just the word memory it is generally represents the software or the illusionary aspect of memory see memory can be anything if you uh, you know do a ram mount or i mean if you do any hard drive if you mount it as a memory like virtual memory swap space or something like that even that is you know going to be memory so it can be anything so when you say ram it is more clear so i generally like to use the word ram see if you take this uh, memory space so uh, when you boot the operating system what is happening is the kernel is going to take up this kernel uh, memory space let me illustrate in a different color so you can see here uh, this is where the linux kernel will sit and it is going to use this address space and this is what i mean uh, okay let's just name it as kernel kernel space which means actually you know kernel you know kernel memory uh, Space. okay memory or address space we can denote so that is what essentially this is so uh, you have any kernel code uh, any components within the linux kernel or you add any extra kernel modules so you do some goof up okay you do some uh, uh, you know wrong memory access it is going to create uh, a kernel crash and it is going to bring down the entire system so that is why uh, doing anything in the kernel space you need to be quite you know careful about versus if you do in user space see what is happening is with the concept of paging and all that effectively what you are getting is you are getting this sort of you know 
uh, you know segmented illusionary memory space okay so what i can do is i can copy this and uh, i can iterate so that you know we can get this entire picture right so let me do another copy of this entire bunch of bars so imagine each one is a you know page something like that in uh, you know this thing so this is what it is so it is split into multiple pages and uh, these pages are like uh, you know it's like a slot any process can use uh, technically any page as long as you know the process is running it is going to use that page once the process is uh, stopped killed whatever the page will be vacant and uh, some other process can use this page so that's what effectively happens so, so let's assume this is your uh, user uh, process so let's uh, illustrate there are you know three processes user space processes and uh, we can call this as uh, you know process a this is process a and uh, say this is uh, p process uh, b and let's call this as uh, you know process c so there are three process and as we know the each process has its own uh, bounded uh, memory space or something like this address space so let's represent uh, somewhat like this see this illusionary area around that you know process is your uh, process memory space so anything you do variable allocation either it is global memory or uh, uh, i mean global variables or local variables let it be arrays static arrays or some dynamic uh, malloc whatever it is it is going to exist in this memory space see again there are people who learn about this heap stack and all this concept but unfortunately they are kind of confused fundamentally <laughs> and often i do have long sessions with my students to clear this clutter and you know simplified way you need to understand this so that you don't sometimes do work on these things but when you architect and do some modules or code or something like that you just need to have a vague picture so that you know uh, if the code is having uh, you know any performance bottlenecks or some issue you know that where you can revisit and correct uh, uh, you know uh, take some corrective measures okay so this is what so let's fill this area like this so this depicts the memory address space of that corresponding process so what happens so uh, this process is going to hold some of the pages uh, so something whichever it is able to hold it is going to hold some of these pages and uh, this process may hold uh, some other set of pages and this uh, process may hold something else so if this process is using more of the data uh, more of that uh, uh, how to say more uh, a memory it may hold more pages so as long as the process is running it is going to do that and uh, in case uh, if the ram is not sufficient and it has less memory then it is going to use the you know swap space and uh, or in we also called as virtual memory and stuff so in linux as we know we call it as swap memory so it is going to use the swap memory uh, in my pc i have turned down the swap memory you can usually do that uh, with a simple command like uh, uh, sudo swap of minus a and it is going to disable the swap memory so after that if you do generally free it's going to show total used and free swap space is zero which means it is no longer enabled so in my case i have done already so it is showing zero and you can see i have around 16 gb of quad channel ddr4 ram it's more like a gaming motherboard i can put even more another four dim uh, you know ram uh, cards so i have totally eight slots so in that i have populated four slots i got this uh, quad channel ram kit okay so each one is 4 gb so it is populated so it is around 16 gb and it shows as you can see here it shows around 3 and of gb has been uh, you know utilized so far okay i have still lot of room available in this uh, system as far as concerned okay so this is what it is and uh, what happens is uh, let's uh, go back to this picture so somewhat like this it happens so any time if you uh, allocate any buffer or something see i can show you my uh, sample mmap code so uh, this is a very simple uh, example see a map has a lot of uh, 
uh, you know you can use it in lot of other ways i have put a very simple sample stub code not to be confused you can even uh, write an extensive files and you can attach the same map and you can also do a character driver and attach uh, open that character driver like any file and attach this map to that and the stuff so i don't want to go in depth i just want to kind of bring the attention of the world who are in the system software development towards this map api so that it kind of inspires you to experiment. Okay.